Hey, 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 testing uh, microphone audio. Check, check one. Check this out. I am going to turn down that and say hello and welcome to John Park's workshop. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I am excited about today's show. I also am sorry to say I still got a cold, so you get uh, you get this raspy, low voice a little bit today. But I think we'll we'll uh, soldier on. 
Uh, real quick, someone had asked a question. I'm gonna mix this song in a little bit about uh, the tunes opening up today's show. And uh, what I got right here is my old Nintendo DSi with this great uh, piece of software called Electroplankton, which is kind of an ambient music jam toy machine game instrument, which is loads of fun. Uh, you can set the tempo of these little guys and change the angles of the leaves, which will uh, impact the sounds they make. And then I've got uh, that mixed in with uh, this little Deech Studio mixer. I got this cool little passive mixer recently made for pocket operators, but I've got that mixed in. And there's my uh, pocket operator tonic playing the drums. So I don't know if you could hear all that because that might have been mixed high, but good A, good V, we're good to go. All right. Hey. So, uh, let's see what we've got today. I'm going to check my notes because I don't want to forget things. First of all, have a look at this. Before I forget, today, 10% off on all of your Adafruit orders, other than gift certificates, but anything else in the store, 10% off with the coupon code RONGO. Once again, that's coupon code RONGO. And uh, for any of you who are Tiki fans, at uh, particularly at Disneyland or Disney World, you'll probably catch the reference to our good friend Rongo there. So that's our coupon code for today. Uh, Where my notes go? All right. Hey, the parrots are back. I just heard parrots. It's been raining here in Los Angeles, and uh, we've got a flock of thousands of wild parrots that have been roaming around for decades. And when they come, it's noisy. I don't know if you guys have heard them. You've probably heard them in the background of my videos before. They're crazy. So let's see. What else have we got today? Uh, so I'm going to do a combination thing today. I talked last week about showing some uh, thrift store finds or estate sale finds. Today, my thrift store find from yesterday actually is impacting the project we're going to be building today. Um, so let me show you that. That is this Tiki statue right here. So I got this uh, for $4.99 at the Tiki, at the Tiki, at the thrift store. Um, I didn't shoot a before and after. I should have, but it was kind of a pale gray, um, and it didn't look quite the part. So I hit it with some wood stain last night, uh, actually yesterday, and after it dried, I hit it with a little bit of clear coat um, spray. So it has a little bit more of a wood look, and I let some of that uh, stain seep into the pores so we get a little more relief on it. So this is a resin uh, cheap thing made in China. I don't know how much it cost originally. I also don't know what it was meant for originally. He's got kind of a little shelf in his mouth here, um, or she. I don't know what the gender is of this tiki. And I hope I'm not offending anyone with this one because I don't know a lot about tiki. But we're going to be um, cutting into this one a little bit to make our project today. So anyway, that's my, that's my thrift store find uh, for the week, is that Tiki. <clears throat> if we have any Tiki experts in the audience, please uh, don't be shy. Let us know what you know about Tiki uh, statues and, and such. I'd be curious to know. Um, so... Let's see, what else? I am, uh, we got the chat going on in Discord. We got the chat in YouTube. Where'd that one go? I just want to pull that one up. Where'd it go? I had it. I was so organized today. There it is. It's hiding. I think I need a third monitor. Hey, why is there a ninja now on my YouTube? That must mean that I have pop-up chat. I do. Uh, there's the, there's the pop-up chat. All right. Tea light candle holder, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense, right? I think, uh, cause it's got a bit of a chimney there. So you could light something, some incense or something like that. And the mouth was a little bit dirty, so someone was using it for something like that. But what we're going to do is a, is a, a little different than a tea light uh, or something. So let's see. Other news. We've got Adabox 7 uh, out for delivery. So if you are a subscriber to Adabox, you may have gotten it already in the mail, or you may be getting it soon, which is exciting. Uh, it'll be arriving on doorsteps and mailboxes, and, uh, oh, look, I just entered that camera. Hey. Uh, I just amused myself, I'm sorry. So I'll switch to that bench cam there. Um, let's put our Tiki guy. Just to have him. So Adabox 7, I'm going to be doing an unboxing in a couple weeks. That's April 3rd, and it's going to be at 
Uh, I'll check my notes so I don't get this wrong. 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I'll be doing the unboxing. We'll go through all the fun stuff in there as well as some of the projects you can do. The guides are live, so if you want to get a sneak peek, check it out. If you like a surprise, don't because it'll give away what's in the box and, and the projects that we have planned. So that's Adabox 07, uh, and you can also subscribe now to Adabox 08 if you don't want to miss out on that one. So go to Adabox Dot com or to adafruit.com slash adabox. That'll probably get you there too. Uh, and look into it because these are fun subscription boxes that have a lot of projects, a lot of um, ideas about learning to use these uh, microcontrollers and components that we put in them. And it's a launching off point for building other projects on your own later. So we're really excited about these. Uh, one other piece of news. I will be, a couple hours after this show wraps, I'm going to be going on the Make Live tonight excuse me, that Make Magazine runs, and that's sponsored by DigiKey. Tyler uh, Weingarner and I are going to be on. He's going to be building the Pizza Box DJ that I made a year ago or so, which I don't have mine here. It's inside the house, but uh, the Pizza Box DJ is a pizza box, a cardboard pizza box with a conductive paint uh, that is used to create control surfaces for MIDI, and then that drives some MIDI-based DJ software. I'm using Tractor. I think Tyler's going to use Mix, which is free, open source, very cool DJ software, and a fun project if you're interested in some of the things you can do with USB MIDI on the uh, Circuit Playground or Circuit Playground Express, as well as conductive paint for making interfaces, which is kind of a fun way to design unique interfaces uh, inexpensively, too. I'm, the first one I made was literally I walked into the... Uh, one of the pizza places like Pizza Hut or something down the road and said, hey, can I get a couple of small size pizza boxes? They're like, sure. Um, so no grease on them. So that's what's coming up today. And uh, other than that, I want to show you the basis for today's project, which is this Password Vault project. So this is, spoiler alert, one of the projects for Adabox 07, which has a security and spy theme to it. Uh, and this is the guide that I published for building the password vault. This is part of the main Adabox 07 guide, in fact. Um, the idea behind the password vault is actually based on a project I had done a while ago using a circuit playground. This one is a little simpler, and uh, what it is is this is a way to store three very long, secure passwords. So I don't mean secure... Uh, in terms of this device is secure, because it's not. I mean secure in terms of keep the device with you or keep it hidden, which is what we're going to do today. But rather than have a simple password that's easy to remember, you could have a very long string of gibberish that's really unlikely to ever get uh, cracked by a brute force attack. And instead of having to remember it or write it down and type it in, our password vault will allow us to press one of the three capacitive touch sensors on the circuit playground, I'm um, sorry, rather on the Gemma, Gemma M0, uh, and that will, over USB, type in for us the long string. So the nice thing is this is a very straightforward program to write in Circuit Python, which is uh, how I wrote it. Uh, you can see it here in the guide. I'll actually show it to you in the Moo uh, Circuit Python or MicroPython editor in a second. Um, by switching screens over to this one. There we go. So that's Moo, uh, which I don't know if I have. Yeah, I think this is one of the latest versions I have running here. Uh, and Moo is nice. It's a straightforward, simple editor that has some syntax highlighting. It has uh, this little check here you can run to tell you uh, any mistakes you may have made or some of the mistakes you made. For example, I'm using pull in the digital, or I'm importing pull in the digital I.O. library, but I'm actually not using it in my code, so I could actually make my code more efficient by ditching that there, and then when I recheck it, it won't yell at me. So this is Moo, and it also has a REPL, which is the, uh, what, read, evaluate, play loop, I think, uh, which allows you to see live your code being interpreted on the device. I don't have one plugged in right now, so we won't see that, but here's the code. Uh, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm using this Adafruit HID library, which allows you to use your, um, any device that we have actually that's got either a 
uh, well, it's an M0, right? A circuit Python device got uh, M0, allows you to use it as an HID USB mouse or keyboard. Uh, and we also have a little uh, helper in here, which is this keyboard layout. And what, what we can use this for is rather than sending individual commands over USB, we can type in full strings with very simple syntax. Sometimes dealing with strings is painful um, on these microcontrollers, but all we're doing is assigning the three touch uh, inputs of the circuit playground, uh, I keep saying that, of the Gemma, uh, and whenever we touch one of them, this is the meat of things, we're gonna get a print statement for our own evaluation just to uh, debug and then we're going to get a USB write of whatever is inside of these parentheses and quotes. So here's my made up passwords. These aren't actually passwords that I have and you could do better. You could make them much more secure than these longer, uh, meaner, more symbols, more upper and lower case. But these three passwords are just going to be pretty quickly typed into your, in fact, let me, let me hook one up and I'll show you what it looks like when I, when I go to this. So here is a Gemma M0, and I've got a, you don't need to do this, but I've got a little uh, wire, alligator clip wire, connected to, which one here, A2 or D0 input. So when I plug this in, what it's gonna do is, first it's gonna calibrate the uh, capacitive touch. So what I wanna do is, plug it in and kind of get away from it because that I want to be, oh look, I didn't do a good job of that, so there it's typing. Let me turn it off and turn it back on again and stay away from, oh boy, I think I've got interference from my keyboard. Careful. All right, let me turn that back off again. You can see what it's doing. I'm gonna deal with that mess by deleting all that. And uh, this is one of these paradoxes of doing these HID based projects is that they'll type for you and you think you're, you're you know, used to typing and being in control of your machine, but when you set up projects where your little devices can type for you, it can get uh, a little crazy. So let me try this again. Okay, I've turned it on, I'm nowhere near it, good. Okay, so it just calibrated uh, the state of the capacitive read. This is its sort of uh, baseline neutral. And now when I touch one of the pads, you can see it's just typing in there this, uh, string that I had set up. So I didn't set this up to automatically hit enter because that's a little maddening. So my idea is that you would have this secreted somewhere among your stuff and then when you touch one of the um, uh, pads, it will type in the key, uh, the, the password for you and it actually takes a little breather for a moment so it doesn't ac accidentally type multiple times if you hold it too long. Uh, and then you pres press enter or hit okay to enter your password. So that's the idea that I've got. Um, the uh, question we have on Discord from NIS is, can the, oh, thank you, read, evaluate, print loop. That's what REPL is. Uh, question, can the rate of keystroke playback be made to emulate a fast human typist, or is it typing much faster than a human would? Uh, let's see, the, gosh, I don't know using this layout. One thing I've done sometimes with this is have it hit individual, um, keys for me and then you can set your spacing. I don't know what the timing is on doing that. Uh, this is the keyboard layout, um, right, the layout right. So that'd be a good question for someone to maybe look at the layout right library. You can go to GitHub and look at it and see what it uh, is uh, setting that typing speed for. I don't know what would prevent it from sending it as fast as possible, and then it's just gonna be up to some sort of USB buffer to deal with. So probably as fast as you could possibly mash a keyboard, it will go up to that rate, but then it could be a throttle based on how, how quickly USB will send that through. It's a good question. I actually have never, never wondered that. I'm glad you brought that up, and I would love for someone to investigate that. Um, how fast can you make it type? Okay, so that's the idea behind the project. So now what we're gonna do is uh, my idea for this was to embed this rather than something you might keep in your pocket, which is kind of a fun way to do it, or on a keychain, and then you plug it in when you need to recover this password, kind of like a, a little two-factor dongle or that sort of thing. Um, I wanted to embed it in a desktop object that might just be sitting innocuously near your keyboard and then have a few 
points on it that you can touch that will uh, cause those three passwords to be triggered. So I was thinking maybe, let me put this guy here, maybe one inside of the roof of his mouth there. So if this is how he's sitting, you would kind of reach up and touch in there. We can put like a, a piece of copper tape in there. And then he's got, I don't know again what this guy's original purpose was in life, but he's got these little holes in his hand. So I was thinking of putting just a couple little metal rods inside of there uh, and then we can touch those to trigger it. And then we can run some wires down and I was thinking of drilling out a hole in the base here and embedding the Gemma in the, in the bottom there by uh, cutting a hole. So let's go make some dust. That's, that's what I got for, uh, for a plan here. So let me unplug that Gemma. That one is no longer in there. And we'll head over to the workbench to make some dust. Let's see, how about main cam? And that's a good overhead. All right, so also I had this um, idea of having some hot water with lemon and a little honey in it to help my voice, except the only little thermos I could find is one that I usually drink coffee out of, and it's disgusting. It's this, it tastes like Chemex cleaning solution made to clean your coffee, or Urnex, clean your coffee pot. It's disgusting. Hmm, actually not as bad <laughs> as it was before. Maybe I'm just acclimatizing to it. Hmm, all right, the lemon has kicked in, so the coffee flavor isn't as bad. Let me unlock this iPad over here so I can see chat. And uh, yeah, just my FM radio voice. Well, thank you all for tuning in to Tiki Time here on WPARK. Uh, so uh, this laptop here I just have as a, uh, we can demo later when the, the uh, passwords are being triggered. But for now, um, let's go to a big overhead And we can do a little workshop view there. Um, so I think I'll start off with just embedding the Gemma in here. That's a good starting point, and then figure out how the wiring is going to go. So um, I don't have a good way to lock him in here without bringing a vice over. So I'm just going to try to be careful. And I'm going to use uh, a Forstner bit on my drill that is a little bigger than the diameter of that Gemma. So this is a one and a quarter inch, which is just about right. Hold that up here, and actually I'm gonna zoom this camera down. Pardon the wobble for a second. All right. So this will be part of the noisy section of the show here today. Um, this is also going to be part of the dusty section. So, you know, I'm going to mark this where I think it ought to go. Let's say about there seems good. And this one, these Forstner bits have a little guide, like pilot uh, sharp fang there. So you don't necessarily need to put a pilot uh, hole. Let's see if that... All right, here comes the dust. Oh, I broke through. Okay, so he's a little hollow. I didn't expect that. I thought that bottom would be solid. And really, I should have a mask on because this stuff is noxious and bad. Um, I'm going to sweep that stuff away. But you can see here I've got, he had about, what, a quarter inch or so uh, of solid. And then he's hollow in there. That's okay. That'll still work out. So let me just sweep some of this dust away for a second. <clears throat> I was talking to Colin Cunningham of Adafruit yesterday about workshop stuff, and one of my big challenges is that I do both sawdust producing and metal swarf producing activities in here as well as electronics, which is 
always a little dicey. I should have better dust collection than I do, but I don't. Okay, so now that we're through there, we can let's see the fit for our Gemma. So I'll fit there like that very nicely. We could hide them under there. Uh, and now I'm going to put a drill a little hole straight through, and that's how the wires will come through. Um, I'm, you know, we, we could get crazy with this and take, take a bandsaw and remove this hollow base and then put holes up through the legs and really hide the wiring. I'm not going to go to those extents with this, um, but you could. You could definitely embed all of your wiring inside of something so it can't really be seen, which would be cool, very secure. Uh, so let's grab a smaller bit. Did I grab bits? Hold on one second. And put a little wiring hole through. There we go. Drill and bit. And I'll come down from the top into there. So I'm just going to estimate where that uh, comes out. There we go. Easy enough. Right. And there we go. So I have some cloth covered, uh, sort of fabric covered braided wire, uh, twisted wire too of them. I could send maybe three up through here so it looks a little nice-ish uh, and then run those up to the three spots. So I think I'm going to do that and I'm just going to leave excess. My plan here is actually to um, solder to this Gemma. It's going gonna, it's gonna to live in here. So I'll solder these wires to the Gemma and then I'll connect them to their uh, respective touch pads up top. So let's go out like that. Uh, I only need three wires running up there, so I'm going to untwist this one. This is this nice lamp wire. I think I got it from Sunshine Electric. This is for rewiring retro lamps. Um, and they're one of the few companies. They're in Massachusetts somewhere. One of the few companies that make this stuff in a few different colors and gauges. This is kind of a thin gauge one, so it works well for these kinds of projects. Can it fit? There's the question. Ah, sometimes you'll end up uh, unraveling all of this. If you can wet it, lick it, <laughs> twist it, you might get it through. Uh, otherwise, I've used heat shrink. Yeah, he doesn't want to come through. Okay, so let's take a small piece of heat shrink and get him. Uh, you know, I'm just going to use tape. That'll be quicker. I'll take a little scotch tape and make that go through. We just need like a shoelace. We just need that to go through. Isn't that called an aglet? The shoelace thing. Uh, all right, so this long one maybe will go up to here, and the short ones will go off to the sides. So I'll leave that all at that length basically for now, and let's solder those into uh, our Gemma. So let me grab a couple of these little magnet arms, make life easier. Widen this out a little bit. There you can see I got my little magnet uh, based helping hands. Uh, and we're going to do about A0 here. So I'll take this wire and strip it a little bit. Let's just solder that to. This one here. Um, I'm just going to tin that first. Zoom up. OK. 
go. And how about, let's switch to our little overhead uh, down shooter rather here so you can get a nice close up dun, 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 like that let's see if it finds focus Whoop. yeah and I think I'll just solder it in like this See that? Yeah. Melt the fabric jacket with a flame, then cut the melted part to avoid the fray, unless it just melts poorly or just chars. That's a good idea. I think I have not tried like an open flame on it. I tried a heat gun and it just laughed at me like that fabric. Probably a good thing. I think it's cotton. And so I don't think it's a synthetic that melted the way I wanted it to. Um, so that ought to work like that. It's kind of long. Oh, well, that's what it is. I could fit a piece of heat shrink down over that. So let's, oops, sorry. Let's get our other two. And bring this back into view for you. Okay. So my other two wires here. Yeah, it might be nice to find a version of this stuff that has a synthetic braid that just kind of shrivels like a piece of paracord sheath does. And let's get these guys the tinning treatment as well. Now, I'm not worrying too much about which um, wire goes to which port because we can change that in software if we need to. Um, whoop. Stay. And one last one here. goes a plane. Okay. Uh, so, this might be a good time to test um, that, we've got a big work, workshop cam here. This might be a good time to test that the Gemma and its capacitive uh, touch with those wires on there is still working well. So let me, uh, upside down, I'm going to select all and delete that resin off there. Uh, and then test by plugging a USB cable in. And I've just got a text editor up on this laptop, so you'll see passwords pop up. So I'm quickly plugging this in. Oh, yeah, and I can't forget, I'm going to have to have a, uh, let's turn that off and on. Hmm, okay, that's not good. It's picking, it's not calibrating. I don't know if it's these guys all crossing with each other, but it's, pull this cord a little longer on the USB as well. Okay, I'm gonna leave it plugged in, but hit the reset. Oh no. Why is it doing that? That's no good. Hmm. Hold on one second. Let me go to, oh, you can see that. Yeah, you can see that if it's in there. I'll pick it all again. 
I'm going to untwist these two. I'm not so sure that uh, two overlapping wires with capacitive antennas is such a good idea. It's probably confusing it. This is not scripted, as you can tell. I didn't actually test that wire like that. Okay, so I've got the wires separated from each other a lot. We actually will have to have some overlap, so we'll see if it's possible to even do this. Uh, nope. Right, let's hit reset. Okay. Maybe that just calibrated. So now I'm going to touch a wire, and it just entered one. Another entered the other. Okay. That seems marginally good. Yeah, I don't think having those, those wires crossed worked well. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll plow ahead. This may end up not working this way by having these uh, so crowded with each other. But I'm going to embed it anyway, and we'll see what happens. Um, another option, of course, would be to have, um, excuse me one second, would be to have pairs of wires running up in actual switches and not use the capacitive touch if, if it's just not possible in this constrained area to do that. Um, so let me go to the this cam. Yes, I'll go to this cam. I can zoom out a bit. And now let's take a look at. I'm going to fit those wires back through there. Oh, I'm going to have to do my tape trick again. Yeah, actually, you know what? While I've got this on here, let's just take a look at. I'm going to use my heat gun. If I can get it to focus on that, I'm going to see. I don't think it works with this. It doesn't really, yeah. I think it just doesn't care. So it might be cotton or something other else that's very heat resistant, which is great considering this was designed to be replacement wire for lamps and if uh, if you're rewiring old lamps, one of the things you're hoping for is to not set things on fire the way the original probably would have. Uh, so I'm just gonna some tape for now. Get those up there. Uh, we may also find that depending on the lengths of these wires, we get better um, success with the. That pad keeps turning off. Uh, Mr. Certainly says that's a very handy down shooter close up cam. Um, this little one, this hover cam, is super, super uh, close up. I love it. Check this out. You can get a really nice close up in here. Of, yeah, come on. I also switched to 1080p last week. So this week also I'm, I'm shooting in 1080p, which. Um, gives you a higher resolution signal. So, okay, let's take a look now. Uh, we've got wiring coming out of here. That's lovely. Um, yeah, I may ditch the sheathing because it's coming off of there. But I need a USB port. So let's fit this in here roughly like, sorry, like there. And then this is where we're going to pop in uh, the USB port. I think, I'm trying to think if I have a clever way of making a square notch in, uh, in this for the USB other than Dremel. Um, not really. Oops, sorry. I may be better off drilling a circular hole because um, the cutoff wheel will tend to overshoot the size of it. Let's just try drilling with a drill. Uh, I think I'll leave this in here and hopefully avoid impaling these wires. I'll do it a little off-center. So let's throw on some glasses and maybe a couple of, I'm going to try to put a dent in there first, maybe a couple of hits from the drill and then a file and we'll get ourselves a, uh, a reasonable hole for the USB. So the USB I'm using is... Let's see this size here. Put that there. I don't want to whack the hover cam. All right, so let's. Um, yeah, we could also drive the USB up and out, but let's put it out of the back of the thing. So 
So I'm going to make just a starter hole, drill that out, and then make a neighbor um, hole. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's try to hold this still, and I'm going to uh, try to hold back so I don't impale the wires. Can you see that? Yeah, you can, you can see that. I'll go to the side a little bit. All right, I feel I'm getting through. There we go. That's kind of thick, huh? All right. So there's one. Let's put a neighbor pretty close to it. Try to continue this as sort of an oval. See, we're starting to. It's gonna be. It's gonna need to be pretty big, though. I think I might have to switch to a bigger bit. Let's see. That's. Uh, it's about as wide as it needs to be. Let's. Yeah. Let's. Uh, let's step up the bit size a little bit and see how we do, getting that through there. The other option is to use, um, like, a build-your-own USB cable where you just force the wire through, and then uh, put the connector on outside. That's a nice alternative. Where did my bits go? Is this any bigger? I don't think that is. What did I start with? A quarter inch? Yes, I did. I would really love a really nice drill index. That would be great. I don't have one. I just have bits in a bunch of places. Those are huge. Oh, here's, this might work. What's this one? Three eighths. All right, step it up to a three eighths. <laughs> well, we have one big hole now. And it just fits. All right, I'm going to, yeah, it's just about the right size. Now I've got to find a way to snake it in from the outside. So I'm going to clear this a little. Actually, I'll pull, yeah, I'll pull this up and out through here if I can. Let's see if it fits. It does. This will be it. There we go. Uh, oh, we did that the wrong way. Yeah, the, the, the small side is going to go in towards the Gemma. All right. That's easier, in fact. Okay. Uh, so now you can see. We flip this. This is kind of one of these little noodly cables, flat USB noodle cables I kind of like for this. Uh, and so I'm going to plug that into Gemma, like so, and then we'll try to bring everyone back in here. Oh, you know what? Let me try to, I'm going to try to put the USB cable here and see if I get the Gemma down there to meet it, because the Gemma's got these wires poking out the sides a little. Just about, and we're in. Okay, uh, that's on. Let's see if it fires up. I think we're good. That's actually a neater fit than I thought I'd get on first attempt. So I'm going to plug that into uh, the laptop USB. It fires up. And yeah, all my wires are crossed, so it immediately is going to start. Let's hit the reset. And let me hit the reset when I'm not touching any of those wires. Uh, 
hands away. Is it still typing? I think it is. This may be doomed because these guys, these guys have to be close to each other to fit through this. So I might have to make it a regular um, contact switch. Let's see. Whoa, what did I do? Did I hit it open? Stop that. Cancel. Um, other problem, too, can be that it's crossing over this USB cable. So I'm going to move that out of the way a little. You're there. Let's just try to get it to behave a little bit. No, it's just going to keep typing and typing. All right, well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll proceed forward as if either I'm going to find a way to tune that, uh, the calibration, which might be possible in the library, uh, or I'll turn these into regular switches. But let's, let's soldier on and at least get, um, we might turn off two of them and just have a single switch. So now, let me zoom out a little bit. Now what we've got... Um, pardon the tiki butt, is uh, I had an idea of doing these little, uh, either this copper tape for the roof of the mouth switch. Might be a fun one to try. Uh, so let's see. I want to know. Yeah, the problem is with these crossing each other, now it's going to be a little harder to know which one is which. So this one runs to A1. Okay, so in software I may disable the other ones at least for now. Uh, so let's cut this wire a little bit and I'm going to try to solder it to a piece of copper tape. And then stick that tape up into the roof of the mouth there. Let's get a nice long... Okay, uh, let's do, I'm going to sweep this up again and then we'll go to this little down shooter for a moment. Okay, so in the down shooter view, we're going to take a nice little piece of copper tape here. Something like so. And I will try to weigh it down with this end of this hammer so it doesn't dance around. Anything you're trying to solder always wants to dance around. This is a truism of electronics. Just gonna put down a little blob of solder on there. I'm gonna tin this one, and again, I'll try to use my helping hand. There, can you see that? Yep. It is really pouring out there, which is super rare for. Los Angeles, we kind of need it though. And okay, so this is this copper tape has a nice uh, adhesive on the back. In fact, I think the adhesive is a little bit conductive, so you can overlap these if you're doing pure like paper and copper circuit type of projects. Um, but in our case, we don't need to worry about that. We've soldered the wire to it, so I'm going to peel off this uh, adhesive protective backing. And I can switch cameras, actually. Oh, does it not want to switch? There we go. And I'm going to place that inside the roof of the mouth there. Like so. Uh, now, 
we may need to go over to software and disable these other two uh, to do anything useful with it. But let's see, just hoping against all hope, if that capacitive touch wants to behave. And I'll bring the laptop over here where we can both see it a little better. I don't think this is what this Tiki guy thought he was going to be doing today when he woke up. Uh, let's see. All right, you can see the bottom of this. Sorry for the overlapping window there. Let's make that this one. Okay, so let's clear that out and. Plug this into USB. I suspect we're going to get false signals. Well, that's a good sign. Did not start typing right away. Move this into here. Now let's touch the roof of his mouth. Hey, it worked. All right. So if that's our password, there we go. We can secretly touch the roof of his mouth. Yeah. Hey, why is that working now? I'm very excited. Good. Uh, this being a text editor, by the way, it's, at, it's throwing a lot of extra brackets and things in there. Um, oh, now, no, now we're getting these false reads again. All right, so I'm going to, let's, let's bring this over to my workstation. Now that we have at least one cool secret uh, touch point there, I can kind of hide that across there, uh, and see if in software we can at least disable the other two in order to make this work just for the single one. Okay, so I said, um, so, oh, let me check the, the Drill three separate holes for the wires. Good idea, Seagrover. Check to see the wires are running over the USB connector. They are. <laughs> In fact, that one is for sure. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I might have a hard time fixing that one. Which one is that? Yeah, I can run him a little bit further away from the USB connector. I might have to unplug. All right, let me do this on the down shooter and show you what, what we're talking about here. Sorry. <clears throat> so, let me zoom in close. Move the laptop again. And, oh, can I change that? So this, I don't know how well you can see it, this wire is heading over the top of the USB connector um, and that could cause it to, to get red uh, as a capacitive touch. So if I unplug USB and drop that wire out and through so that my cable isn't giving it quite as much interference. We may be better off. Let me grab uh, all my little tools are hiding under this laptop. I got a dental pick kind of thing. So I'm going to move some of that fuzz out of the way. All right, let's replug. I'm sorry, you can't see that. There we go. Okay, so that's at least something. So the one that we want, I said, is in, oh dear, I think it's in D2. Now I can't see it jiggle like I could before. That one. 
Okay, I think that's in D2. So I'm going to try disabling the other two. Let's do some, let's do some experiments. Uh, and Moo will make this pretty quick. Uh, we should be able to see results pretty quickly as we do this. So I'm going to hop to here to here, and I'll plug in to USB. Yeah, things get dicey with these capacitive, essentially, antennas that we're making. Uh, and i put my cursor right here so that I don't accidentally. Okay, so that is on right now. Bring our tiki friend up here. So I'll touch the, so you can see it just typed in. So that's good. Um, if I turn on the REPL, let's see. Might bring the mic audio up a bit. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. Let's see if that helps. Um, Thank you. So in the REPL here, I'm going to hit Control D, waiting for button presses. So when I press it, OK. So what just happened there is that I have, and I don't know if I can change this inside of Moo. I have my little button switcher box that I used to change my cameras. That's the one that just grabbed the REPL. Um, so I will instead. Instead of using that, I could go to a screen session, but in, you know, instead of using that, I'm just going to note when I touch this, that is this password here. So this is the A, if you can see my cursor, this is the A1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out the other two, and I'm not even going to read them. And we'll just see if we can get this to be a nice consistent one. Uh, so we'll turn off touch on this one and this one. So I'm just commenting these out. These are a couple ways you can comment out in Python, this either with this pound sign uh, or you can comment out a section instead of line by line with these triple single quotes at the beginning and the end. Uh, so I can uh, do a, can you do a save as on here? Yeah. Do a save as, so I don't want to save it to the cam switcher one. I'm going to save it to my Gemma. Sorry, I'm just waiting for that to show up. I can enjoy our tiki friend here. Nis, how's that audio? I, I boosted it a little bit just on the mixer input. Let me know. If that's, uh, oh gosh, it's working in here. <laughs> I'm touching. Oh. Okay, so main.py, I'm saving it onto here. Replace. Okay, so now you can see down below, I'm going to. Touch that mouth pad. Ooh, it didn't do anything. So what's up? What is happening? Did I turn the wrong ones off? I don't think so. Uh, what did I say? A1? Do I still have A1 turned on? Touch 1 is A1. And if touch... Oh, what happened? Let's reset it. I'm just going to... So you got to... Like I say, you got to be careful what you're touching and holding when you uh, reset these. Let's see. Oh, okay, so you can see here I'm getting blinking. It doesn't like something I did in code. Is it happy now? Yeah, see it's, it, see it's flashing at me, so something is bad. What did I do? I may have done something bad in code. Syntax error, Python can't understand this line. Why can't it understand this line? I did what? Hang this down now. Okay, so Python people, it could still be louder. How could it still be louder? How about, how about like that? Okay, that might clip a little bit. Much nicer for you. Okay, sorry about that. It can also be my little lapel mic moves around. Uh, double quotes, not singles. No, for, uh, oh, does it not like this space? Is that the one that it didn't like? It didn't. I think it could be that. Let's save that again. 
let's check our so steady green no not steady green syntax error why is it uh, or maybe that's just the first one it's running into okay I'm gonna do sorry about this folks I'm gonna do a brute force Indentation, not a multiple of four. Oh boy, now we get into this fun. Okay. That's weird. I think it'll yell about the one above it now, won't it? What was wrong with that one? Tiki Vault is Tiki Password. All right, so now let's see. Okay, whoa, it's, it's on. It's, haha, <laughs> okay, it seems to be working now. All right, uh, sorry about those problems. So let's, uh, Let's put the cursor down here somewhere safe. So this is kind of cool. Now it seems, uh, if I can hold it, now it seems to be working pretty well. So, so now it's actually, I can get close without even touching that copper pad and I get the thing to write. All right, so I'll call that a partial success. I think it'd be ambitious to get the three of them working, but maybe. Um, but that is our little tiki friend there now working with a, uh, oh, let me turn off this dinging sound, uh, with a single capacitive pad. We've got the little Gemma down below. I'm keeping my, my cursor somewhere safe. So we've got the Gemma below, we got USB, we got the cable running up into the copper pad there. And now if I hold it low enough, down here, I'm not triggering that, but when I touch his teeth, you get the password entered. And of course, you could use this to trigger all kinds of things. This could be um, not just a password thing. Anything where you need to type something into the computer, it could be a command, could be a shortcut. You know how I use my button box over there to switch cameras? We could do the same thing. It might be uh, a little more robust if you had multiple objects. Excuse me, so you could have um, your wiring a little more separated and have three different Tiki guys that you touch to uh, cause different passwords to go in. And of course, as I always like to think with these things, it could be a pretty cool escape room uh, puzzle sort of thing, touching things in order or whatever. It's really up to you what you want to do in software once you get something like this set up and working. Um, but that is going to be it for today. That's my Tiki password vault. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I thank everybody for stopping by and watching and uh, appreciate everyone coming by and hanging out in the various chats. Um, and I'll hang out in the Discord chat for a little while after the show. Uh, and so don't forget, let me pop this back up real quick. We've got our coupon code for today. That is Rongo, R-O-N-G-O. That'll get you 10% off in the Adafruit store. And uh, that is good until midnight tonight. And... Uh, I will also be, as I mentioned, on Make Live in a couple of hours. That'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, and I'll be working with Tyler Weingartner on the Circuit Playground Pizza Box DJ project. So come by and check it out. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm John Park for Adafruit. This is John Park's workshop. Goodbye.